G'day guys, welcome back to the round 22 version of the power rankings or the power rankings before round 22. If you're unfamiliar, this is a format where I'm trying to plot teams in order of current form uh, with a particular focus on the last five rounds. And I've been doing this all year and honestly, it's not getting any easier. And this one again is a particularly rough round because there were teams, you know, even over the last fortnight, teams that sort of made some conclusions on who have then bucked the trend. Teams that had a very good run of five games last week, some of them disappointed, some teams that had plummeted, played well. How far down do you drop Sydney? We're gonna get into all of that. So as I always do, start from the bottom of my rankings and I move up to who I think is the top team on the in the competition on current form. So let's start with our bottom three. This has been a group of uh, bottom three teams that I think has separated itself from the rest this year negatively. But I do have my first change in this space for a while and I'm pleased to say West Coast are no longer the 18th ranked side of the competition with a win over the Gold Coast Suns on Friday night. And that's enough to lift them off bottom spot because Richmond have been winless in all of their last five games. I don't think they've played terribly, but nonetheless, the difference being West Coast uh, won a game. And to be honest, in the last four games West Coast have played, there's been one poor performance and then three fairly good ones uh, relative to expectations. So North Melbourne with a win over Richmond, because it was only against Richmond again, probably stay in 16th spot. And obviously as the ladder reflects, there's still a gap between them and the other sides of the competition. Nonetheless, immediately above this, it gets real murky. So I've got the Gold Coast Suns dropping. They've lost their last two. They've actually only won one of their last five games with that being over Port Adelaide. So that is a good win. There's been three trips away of which they've lost them all and they've also lost another home game to the Brisbane Lions. So not a compelling run of form for the Gold Coast Suns. Then I've got the top spot team in Sydney dropping all the way to 14th. I think with their horrendous fortnight, I mean, it was a bad loss to the Western Bulldogs backed up by an even more horrendous, seriously alarm bell ringing performance against Port Adelaide where they lost by 112. I'm dropping them down that far. How far do you really drop a team that, you know, was, what were they, 10 and one? I don't even know what they were. Probably better than that. 12 or 13 and one have been, you know, pretty horrid since. And, you know, for a few games there, they were only losing by narrow margins, but right now they look a little bit cooked. So I'm not convinced, you know, they're gonna plummet down the ladder Yet, we'll wait and see. It's kind of a fascinating case study of what's happening at Sydney right now. I've got Melbourne just above that. They've had one, two out of their last five, which is better than Sydney. Those wins were over West Coast and Essendon, and their losses against the Dockers, Giants, and Bulldogs. I mean, there was one close loss in there against the Giants, and the other two were not super competitive by Melbourne's usual standards. So they're flailing at the moment for sure. We've got Adelaide just above them. Adelaide put in a pretty good honourable loss at GMHBA, which is tough going, um, you know, and fought right to the end. And again, it's just been up and down with the Adelaide Crows, one of the hardest teams to rate, but they still won two of their last five. And with wins over the Saints and the Bombers in Melbourne, you have to consider that fairly okay form. I've got the Saints just ahead of them. Saints dropped down slightly. Um, you know, they got absolutely battered by the Brisbane Lions and their other loss in the last five was against the Crows in Adelaide. Having said that, they've still won three other games. They put West Coast to the sword. They put Essendon massively to the sword and they beat Sydney at Marvel Stadium as well. So again, another mixed bag of form, but they really do fall by the rankings with a little bit of recency bias because their last performance was very uncompetitive. But nonetheless, it's been an okay run of five games for them. Now I've got a, a group of teams or two teams actually shooting up into ninth and 10th spot. Let's go Essendon and Collingwood in ninth and 10th, shooting up in a big way. And that's reflective just because of how even a lot of that part of the ladder is. Essendon coming off a good win against Fremantle, you know, season on the line. Some may say their season's already gone, but nonetheless a good win when they needed it. And I would still say, you know, considering with Sydney to go, uh, they've got the Gold Coast Suns to go, they've got the Lions at the Gabba, they could win two out of those three considering current form. So they're still in the mix. Collingwood as well, good win over Carlton. You could justifiably have them below St Kilda, but St Kilda just got battered and Collingwood have been better this season in my opinion. So tough one to separate there, but I think Collingwood is slightly better than St Kilda. Carlton I've got actually in the same spot as last week and that's because the top seven have shuffled around, but Carlton have only won one in their last five. The only reason Carlton's not like down below with Sydney, despite both teams having only won one game in the last five, both teams have also only beat North Melbourne in their last five. But the Blues have had some tough fixtures. So when you consider the form the Giants are in in Sydney, they lost that narrowly. They have lost to the Bulldogs, one of the best teams in the comp on current form. They lost to a rampaging power, who again are going to rank highly in this ranking, and then Collingwood most recently. The Collingwood loss would be the most disappointing on paper. So Carlton's 1-4 record isn't great, but that does come with a tough stretch of form. So 
They could continue to trend down the ladder. They've got another tough game against Hawthorne this week. We'll see what happens there. So then I've got a group of five teams. Again, I found it hard to separate. So we'll start with 7th, 6th, and 5th. I've got Geelong up in 5th. I've got Hawthorne in 6th and Fremantle in 7th. Hawthorne and Fremantle in 6th and 7th is a reasonable drop from last week, and that feels harsh. Both of them lost narrow games um, against teams still playing for finals. It's it's more speaking to the evenness of the competition around them. So we'll start with Frio. Three out of their last five games, and uh, you know probably bottled a winning lead against the Bombers to lose. Hawthorne equally, in fact, possibly... I forget the exact margins, but both of these teams lost big leads to lose these games narrowly. So Hawthorne lost to GWS, and they just just drop below Geelong because Geelong has won four out of the last five. Now, personal opinion, I think Fremantle is probably better than Geelong at the moment, but you know, with the record Geelong has, it's hard to argue that they don't deserve to be higher on form rankings considering they've won four out of the last five and only a handful of teams have done that. These two sides do meet at Optus Stadium this week and that will be telling. I personally think Fremantle will win, but who knows, Geelong have been consistent over the last run of form. So, In third and fourth, I've got the Power in third and the Giants in fourth. So the Giants have actually won all five of their last five games with wins over the Blues, Richmond, Gold Coast, the Demons, and the Hawks with the most two impressive wins, I'd say. Carlton at the time and Hawthorne most recently as well coming from behind to win that game. So again, it's hard to argue with that form. I don't think they've played their best footy. They've looked good at times. I think they've played parts of games, but you can't argue with that record and I still think they're fourth. I didn't have them ahead of Port Adelaide because Port Adelaide's form, despite losing one of their last five, in the last fortnight in particular, I think to go to Marvel Stadium and beat Carlton in Melbourne and then back that up with a big win over Sydney. Again, Sydney is not the same opponent it was earlier in the year. But I think you have to reward that form, and I'd say Port Adelaide deserve to be higher on the power rankings than GWS at this point in time. But both are making a late charge for top four and genuine premiership contention. Then we've got our top two, and at the moment, this could be... This could genuinely be the grand final. Um, and I'm, I don't know, I shouldn't make claims like that because so much of this season has been topsy turvy. And it just seemed for a long time this year who would be the opponent for Sydney in this year's grand final. So I'm not going to make that claim. But at the moment, I think this is clearly the best two teams in the competition. The Bulldogs, most recently, with a big win over Melbourne, pretty one sided affair. Their stars are firing. Bontempelli. Unbelievable once again, and you know the week before that trounced Sydney again. Sydney got trounced even worse the following week to Port Adelaide, but nonetheless, I think the over the stretch the Bulldogs are building some compelling form. I think they're a genuine premiership contender. They can still make the top four. In fact, I think they will based on the fixture remaining this season. And if they do, they're a huge shout to go all the way to the last weekend in September and potentially play the Brisbane Lions, who. You know, gave St Kilda a footballing lesson at Marvel Stadium. I don't know how much needs to be unpacked about that. I've had Brisbane as the top seed for a number of weeks now, and they have made no mistake against St Kilda, so comfortably the best team in the competition. But, you know, there's three weeks to go. Things can change. We've also got a pre-finals bye, which might throw out momentum for certain teams. So uh, this is one of the most fascinating finals races, one of the most whack seasons I've ever followed. And uh, despite my team being planted to the bottom three, which might become bottom two this year. I've really enjoyed covering it and doing my best with these power rankings. So let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.